Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Welcome to Golden Blue today, everybody. This is the College Football Channel. So if you like college football, hit the like and subscribe button. It's that simple. Also, send gear to represent your team and be a part of my background forever. All you have to do is send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page. We have a lot of great perks over there. The perk that people seem to enjoy the most, of course, is the score prediction contest where we award $20 every single week to whoever gets closest to the actual score of the game that I pick. We also did a championship week. I will award $25 to that winner and right now is the best time to join patreon because we are going to do the bowl prediction contest first place prize will win fifty dollars second place prize is an autographed golden blue dude flat bill hat and the third place prize is a shout out and the more patreons we get the higher we can bump up the prize so if we get up to three hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we will bump up the prize to seventy five dollars if we get up to four hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we'll bump the prize up to a hundred dollars and so on and so forth so there's even an incentive for current patreon members to encourage encourage other people to join Patreon. That way the price goes even higher. I'll leave the link to the Patreon page in the description of this video. Try to stay positive. Try to stay positive. I am trying to stay positive. But every day it gets more and more difficult to stay positive about West Virginia football, specifically the future, specifically 2023. It is not looking good. We are losing players left and right either through the transfer portal or they're declaring for the NFL draft. Neil Brown might have another built-in excuse for 2023 if he doesn't have a successful season and it could be we were a very young team. What am I talking about? Well, I I'm talking about losing a ton of players. That's what I'm talking about. We already know about Mumu being one of hide. He's hit the transfer portal. Charles Woods he found a home at SMU. JT Daniels hit the transfer portal, although I don't fault him for that. And it's the best decision for JT Daniels and West Virginia. High-profile recruit Corbin Page, he's entered the transfer portal. Talented defensive lineman Taj Austin, he's hit the transfer portal. We know that wide receiver Reese Smith, he hit the transfer portal. And we know that Bryce Ford Wheaton and Sam James have both declared for the NFL draft. On top of that, we just had defensive back Jasir Cox. He declared for the NFL Draft. And now another talented wide receiver has entered the transfer portal. Here's a list of wide receivers that was on this year's teams that were very productive that will no longer be a part of West Virginia. First up, Reese Smith. He had 19 receptions for 205 yards, one touchdown. Okay, that's not a huge deal, but some production, right? Wide receiver Sam James declared for the NFL Draft. 46 receptions for 745 yards and six touchdowns. That is a lot of production that we're losing with Sam James. So go along with him. Bryce Ford Wheaton, he's declared for the NFL Draft. 62 receptions for 675 yards and 7 touchdowns. Again, one of our most productive wide receivers. And now adding to the list, wide receiver Caden Prather. 52 receptions for 501 yards and 3 touchdowns. That's a total of 179 receptions for 2,126 yards and 17 touchdowns that we are losing. And on top of that, former players, they're taking shots at this coaching staff and what's going on at West Virginia. Jeffrey Poehler said, thought it was obvious when we did this two years ago. TJ Simmons responded by saying, WU really sacrificing the whole team for one man. He also went on to say, they tried to blame my guy Shane, but it's the folks above him. So TJ Simmons is saying it's the people above Shane Lyons. Talking about Gordon Gee? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Listen, this, this is not good. And I understand, I understand, everybody is losing players in the transfer portal. Oklahoma State is getting hit very, very hard by the transfer portal. But West Virginia has proven that we cannot feel the losses either on par or better. Usually we feel with worse. We're headed in the wrong direction. And of course, this gives Neil Brown that built-in excuse of, well, we were young in 2023, and the schedule was pretty tough. Yeah, no crap, but everybody else has the same excuses. Everybody's young. Everybody has a tough schedule. That's what college football is all about. You have to prove that you're a good football coach to get through that. And you haven't proven that. In fact, you've proven the complete opposite. West Virginia has been going backwards. And y'all know me. I I've been behind Neil Brown when a lot of people had given up by then. I officially jumped off in the Texas game when we went down 28-7 to at halftime. That's when I jumped off the Neil Brown train. And we finished 5-7 and seven this year. That's the same record that we have in year one. And he did have a lot of excuses in year one. The cupboard was bare in year one. But this is year four, 
And now we're headed into year five. Year five. Think about that. We are headed into year five. What are we willing to put up with in year five to say we're okay if Neil Brown stays? I would say eight and four is the basement, but even that's a little questionable. Eight and four would be acceptable, I guess. Anything below that, uh uh. Even this past year, I said seven and five as long as we saw some improvement on the offense. And we did see some improvement on the offense, but the defense took a massive step backwards. So it didn't matter that our offense got better. And we finished five and seven. That was not acceptable, and yet Neil Brown still has his job, and now we're losing players left and right to the portal, declaring for the draft. People do not want to stick around here at West Virginia, and West Virginia has some of the best football facilities in the entire Big 12, and people still don't want to stay at West Virginia. Now, the good news is our high-profile recruit, Rodney Gallagher, has confirmed he will sign with West Virginia on December 21st, so the recruiting class is still looking good. But we aren't able to keep those recruits. Caden Prather, he was one of Neil Brown's best recruits. He was a Neil Brown guy, and he's gone. He is leaving. He is not sticking around. That that That's probably the worst loss as far as signaling players giving up on Neil Brown because Caden Prather, highest profile recruit that Neil Brown's brought in, 100% a Neil Brown guy, backed his coach up game after game after game, and he's finally said, nope, I've had enough, I'm going elsewhere. That is a sign of big-time trouble at West Virginia. Now, all these other losses, yes, they suck. But I think specifically losing Caden Prather is a bad sign for West Virginia, a bad sign that the players have given up on West Virginia. We'll see if Nico Marco sticks around. We'll see if Garrett Green sticks around. We already know that JT Daniels and Will Crowder, Will Crowder entered the transfer portal. So both of those quarterbacks are gone. And we did see West Virginia transition into the spread RPO, which history has told us West Virginia has had the most success under the spread RPO. But are they willing to stick with that? Are they willing to stick with the game plan of the spread RPO? And how does the defense get fixed? I mean, we're losing some of our best defensive linemen. Jasir Cox, our best defensive back, is gone. He's declared for the NFL draft. I mean, the middle of the defense, I have never seen the middle of any defense as bad as what ours was. I mean, basically, if you ran across the middle of the field, you were going to be wide open. I don't know what kind of defensive scheme that was supposed to be, but it was basically leave your man wide open if they get in the middle of the field type of scheme. That's what we were running. So I, I don't know. I, I try to stay positive. I am a true West Virginia fan, and I do realize that Neil Brown will be the head coach for 2023. So I'm trying to support him. I'm trying to support West Virginia. But this is unacceptable as far as us losing and then players giving up on the team. When is enough going to be enough? How bad does it have to get for West Virginia to finally say, man, we do need to fire Neil Brown? And I understand the buyout, but you do realize the buyout dropped to $13.5 million. And that's still a lot of money. But I think West Virginia can afford $13.5 million. I know some big-time donors that own professional sports teams that could probably pay that right out of the gates. The money is there. We could pay for his buyout. That's not one of the biggest buyouts I've ever seen. That's not that bad of a buyout. I mean, it's significant, but West Virginia can afford that. How much losing do we have to put up with before we're willing to actually say, yes, we need to buy him out? And honestly, I think he would be hired by somebody else and that would help with the buyout. That would help pay off the buyout. So it's not as bad as people think when it comes to the buyout. And I'm just sick of losing. I'm sick of the jokes. I'm sick of everybody looking down on West What do you expect? You're West Virginia mediocrity. No, West Virginia is actually an all-time top 25 as far as total wins program in college football. We're still top 30 in winning percentage. We're clinging on to top 30. We were top 25 at one point. But Neil Brown has lost so much at West Virginia that we've dipped into the 30s. But still, that's not bad. So no, West Virginia should not be okay with mediocrity. You look at next year's schedule, and I've talked about this before. At Penn State, Duquesne, Pitt, at Kansas, Texas Tech, at TCU, Oklahoma State, at Baylor, Iowa State, at Kansas State, Texas, and Oklahoma. On one of my predictions, I gave West Virginia the benefit of the doubt and said maybe we can go 6-6. Six and six, But with all the production that we've lost... Here's my updated prediction for 2023. Now, we don't know what's going to happen in the offseason just yet as far as what West Virginia is going to get. But based on what I'm seeing right now, that first game at Penn State is going to be a blowout loss. We will get absolutely spanked by Penn State. We come back home to FCS Duquesne. That's going to be a gimme win. We stay at home for the pit game. Now, for the sheer sake of my sanity, I will say that West Virginia wins this football game. But yes, we could most definitely lose that game. But for my sanity's sake... I'll say West Virginia beats Pitt. Then on the road to Kansas, that's a loss. 
Texas Tech at home. Texas Tech has had our number since Neil Brown has taken over. They beat us again. That's a loss. At TCU, that's a big loss. Oklahoma State at home. Oklahoma State is in the same boat as West Virginia. This is in Morgantown, so I'll give West Virginia a win. At Baylor, big time loss. Iowa State at home. I still think they'll be rebuilding. It's in Morgantown. We've done pretty well against Iowa State at home. I'll give West Virginia a win. Then at Kansas State, that's a big loss. Texas at home. I gave West Virginia the benefit of the doubt on my last prediction against Texas at home. Not anymore. That's a loss. And then on the road to Oklahoma, that's a loss as well. So my new prediction for West Virginia for 2023 is 4-8. And I really hope that I'm wrong. I really do. I hope that Neil Brown proves me absolutely wrong because that's exactly what happened last year. He proved me exactly wrong because I predicted 9-3. and We finished 5-7. and So I'm taking the reverse route. I'm predicting 4-8. And hopefully he proves me absolutely wrong and we go 8-4 or 9-3. and three. But that's where I stand with West Virginia. So y'all let me know in the comments section. If you're a West Virginia fan, how concerned are you about all these losses, either the transfer portal or the NFL draft, or are you not really concerned it's on par with everybody else? And if you're not a West Virginia fan on the outside looking in, do you think West Virginia is in trouble? That's all I got for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.